everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph and write cubic functions. So the best and easiest way to do this is to do it in intercept form. So if we extend intercept form from quadratic to a cubic, we just need to add an additional x-intercept. Okay, so our cubic function is going to cross the x-axis three times, so it's going to make us give this curve feature right here when we graph it. Okay, so we still have f of x equals a, and then times x minus p, x minus q, and x minus r, where p, q, and r are our x-intercepts. Okay, so let's look at example one. We're going to graph, it says f of x equals negative x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x. So right now, this is in standard form. And remember, our intercept form is in factored form. So we want to factor this trinomial. So let's factor it in such a way so that we can maybe get um, an x squared term. So let's see if we can factor out an x. So we have f of x equals negative x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x. Notice that all three of my terms have an x. So I'm going to factor out, and since my a value is negative, I'm going to go ahead and factor out a negative as well. So I'm going to factor out a negative x. So once I do that, I say, okay, negative x times what is negative x cubed. So here, this becomes x squared. Now this would become minus 4x, and this would become plus 3, okay? So now, if we were to distribute this negative x, it should get us back to that original trinomial that we had, okay? So now we can factor what's in parentheses because it is a trinomial with a factor of 2, and, or a, x, a degree of 2, the highest exponent is a 2. So now we should ask ourselves, what two numbers add negative 4 and multiply to 3? So we can say f of x equals negative x, and here, let's think, multiply to negative 3, add to negative 4. So we're adding to a negative, so we need two negative numbers. So x minus something and x minus something. And what two numbers add to negative 4? We could say negative 1 and negative 3. So negative 1 and negative 3. And negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. So we know we're good there. So now what we have done is we have found our three x-intercepts. Okay. So right here we could say, well, let's think about it. Our x-intercepts are when y is equal to 0, right? So if I plug in 0 for y or for f of x, now we have this, which is essentially the zero product property. So now I can set each of these equal to 0. So I can say negative x equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. And those are going to give me my x-intercepts. Well, for negative x equals 0, we would divide both sides by negative 1, and that is still x equals 0. So now I can plot that as my first x-intercept. Then we have, we add 1, so we get x equals 1. There's our next intercept. And here we can add 3, so now we have x equals 3. So 2 and 3. So now what we want to do is, is we want to pick an x value that's between two of our intercepts. Plug it into our equation and figure out what the y value is so that we know how high or how low our graph should go. Okay, so let's switch up our color. And let's look at this equation right here. Okay, this might be the easiest one for us to plug in some values for. So notice here I have one and here I have three. No, it's kind of hard to see that. So let's plug in two for x and see what our y coordinate gives us. So let's say we want to do, we'll go down here. We want to do the f of two. So we're going to say negative two times two minus one times two minus three. And we're going to see what y gives us. So this would be negative 2 times 1 times negative 1, and this would just be 2. So that means we have a point at 2 comma 2, okay? So now that gives me my, my curve here as we're going down. I think I can make that a little better. There we go. Okay, so now we just need to know how, how low does our graph go. So now we have 0 here, we have 1 here, so the right there would be 1 half. So let's plug in 1 half now and see what we get. So let's do the f, sorry I'm kind of all over the place here, but f equals one, or the f of 1 half, and once again let's plug it into this equation right here. So we're going to say negative 1 half times 1 half minus 1 times 1 half minus 3. Okay, so once we do this, the f of 1 half, we could go ahead and plug all that in our calculator if we wanted to, we're going to end up with negative 0 0.625. So we can kind of estimate that on our graph, I can zoom in here a little bit, all right? So negative 
625 would be maybe somewhere right there. Okay, and now we can make our graph. So now we make it up, and that's what our final graph would look like. Okay, so just to kind of review there, find your three x intercepts, and then pick an x value that's between each of your two inter um, x intercepts. Plug that in to figure out how high or how low your graph is going to go. Now let's look at how to write a cubic function. So this one says the zeros of a cubic function are 0, 2, and 5. And the graph also passes through the point 3, 12. Write the function. And we want to write it in standard form, but we're going to start with its intercepts. So let's say f of x equals a times x minus p times x minus q times x minus r. And here we have p, q, and r. Because those are the zeros of the function or the x-intercepts. So we can say f of x equals a times x minus 0 times x minus 2 times x minus 5. And let's simplify that. So we know x minus 0 would just be x, and we'll leave these as x minus 2 and x minus 5. So now we need to figure out what a is. So to do that, we can plug in our other coordinate, x and f of x, or x and y. So I'm going to plug 12 in for f of x, and let's plug in 3 for x. So 3 minus 2, 3 minus 5. So now let's come up here. So now we have 12 equals, let's call this 3a, 3 times a, and then times 1 and times negative 2. So 12 equals 3a times negative 2, which kind of multiplying these one at a time. And we can divide now by negative 6, and we get a is equal to negative 2. So now with a equaling negative 2, we can now take this and let's plug it right here in this equation. Okay, so let's switch up our color again. And now let's say f of x equals negative 2 times x times x minus 2 times x minus 5. Now let's take these two binomials here and let's FOIL them so that we can begin to simplify a little bit. Okay, so now we have f of x equals negative 2. I'm going to leave this x right here in parentheses. And now we're going to FOIL these two binomials. So we get x squared, x times x, x times negative 5, so negative 5x, negative 2 times x, so we can add those together to get negative 7x, and then negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Now let's go ahead and distribute this x, okay? Now we could do this in one step and distribute it negative, a negative 2x, but let's just do it one step at a time. So let's say f of x equals negative 2. Now I'm going to distribute this x to all three of these terms. So now we get x cubed minus 7x squared plus 10x, okay? So now our last step that we would do is now we can distribute this negative 2. So once again, you could have done that in one step, but we are just taking it nice and slow. So negative 2x cubed plus 14x squared minus 20x. And that would be our final answer. So now we can put a box around that. And we have now taken an, a cubic function from intercept form and written it in standard form. Okay, so that's how you graph and write cubic functions. Mm -hmm.